there are massive unrecognized changes of geologic scale taking place in the ocean. Ocean chemistry is being altered on a scale not seen for millions of years, and we don't know what the consequences will be. We are heading into some pretty dangerous territory here. It's not just the magnitude of the change, it's the rate of change that species can't adapt to. I think we've gone past the point now whereby we can avoid losing significant species. We're playing poker. And if we lose at the poker, we could have a lot of problems for civilization. You are married. We are very we are. much married, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I gather the uh, the discussion of the family vacation boils down to, okay, it's either going to be Disney World or the Arctic Circle. Is that, <laughs> is that the way it works out? Or? Exactly. That's about it. Although I think we're going to make the Arctic Circle seem a little like Disney World. I mean, I think we would prefer to take our grandchildren to the Arctic and make them think that that is not entertainment, but that's the most interesting place that you could possibly go. So we'll substitute. Children figure a lot. Uh, in this film. Can you explain the, uh, the decision for that? Well, I think for a number of reasons. One would be from the point of view of a grandfather, reflecting on the legacy that he's leaving and his concern for the future for his own grandchildren. Uh, and in order to do that in a meaningful and moving way, including children, uh, provides the constant reminder uh, that you know, these are the these are the young people uh, that we are leaving behind who are going to be dealing with this rather enormous problem. Uh, so it's a constant reminder that this is like your family, this is like everybody's family. These are the children that are going to be affected. So we thought that was particularly important. Additionally, children have remarkable things to say. It's always a pleasure to listen to them. They're far more intelligent than anybody gives them credit for. And they get it. They get things that adults often don't. So again, reminding people that children are brilliant little creatures and that we should be listening to them, as well as trying to plan for um, a better future for them is very important. It took us really a generation to come up to speed on global warming. And I, I wish I could say that we're now there, but uh, we still have a ways to go. The challenge here is that this is the, the flip side of the global warming coin. It's also about CO2 and the consequences of billions, hundreds of billions of tons, of metric tons of carbon having been put into the air since the Industrial Revolution, and the consequences of that as it's absorbed by our oceans. And we really have to move quickly. You know, in the best of all possible worlds, we would end the emission of uh, anthropogenic CO2. That'd be the best of all possible worlds. Um, let's say we're not going to achieve the best immediately, uh, but we need to cut back as quickly as we can. And it's really why we made the film. We made the film in. in Help me here. We made the film because we believed that we could use our skill set as filmmakers to contribute to the dialogue, the discussion, the noise, if you will, around this subject. Oh, uh, Obama's been sort of talking the talk late about this issue. Have you seen signs that if he hasn't yet been walking the walk, has he at least been making some tentative steps? Yes, that. A, a number of different ways, and specifically in terms of ocean acidification by um, nominating um, Jane Lubchenco as the new head of NOAA. This is an oceanographer. This is a very distinguished oceanographer who is uh, very aware of ocean acidification and the realities and challenges around it. So that position alone, uh, I think, signals that he is very, very serious about getting, getting to work. And, of course, he has spoken quite a bit about clean technology being the future uh, in this country, the economic engine, and I, I have great faith that he's going to follow through on that uh, as well as he can, 
and we're watching you know every move we are here to support him 100 percent he's our our president we support him and uh, we think that we are at a point that if he is allowed to do what he wants to do uh, we can turn the corner we can turn the corner in a number of ways so we're here to support him in any way we possibly can and there's no question that this spills out over American borders. Uh, I've been getting emails recently from scientists we interviewed in Norway uh, and in England, and they are guardedly optimistic about changes they already see being set in motion in this country. And they are now beginning to be hopeful that we can be playing not a bystander role or the role of a country whose heels are dug in, but that actually the United States is going to come to Copenhagen and play a leadership role. And that's some pretty cynical Brits uh, that are sharing that with me, and I, I couldn't be more delighted. I couldn't be more delighted. I know you're only five years old, Elias, so I may not send this letter until you're much older. I'm writing to share with you my worries about what my generation is leaving to yours. I'm 65 now, and when you're ready to read this, you might well ask what I did to help solve this problem. I really believe, Elias, that the most important thing is to gather as much information as possible to pass on to you and others about what is happening in our oceans. My life has taught me that the power to affect change begins with knowledge.